Hello guys, I know it's been a while since I've made a video. Um, I've been kind of neglecting this channel, my gaming channel. I apologize for that. I'm super busy with my new book, After the Last Battle. Um, here's the cover, put it in here. Um, it took a while to write, publishing, and then uh, recently it's kind of been coming to a head as it's finally out for pre-order, so I've been really busy with that. Um, I'll leave some links in the description where you can get it. It's only available for pre-order in ebook right now, but it should be all available for pre-order in hardback sometime later this week, early next week. Um, you also can check out my website. I'll leave a link in the description, or if you like top typing it, it's www.fantastical-fiction.com. Um, so yeah, check that out, you know, and just see what it's like. Um, anyway, today I wanted to talk about Witcher, specifically The Witcher's Silver Sword. Now this is something pretty unique to The Witcher series, so you think you would see it everywhere, this and that, and that, it doesn't work, it's a practical one. I really haven't. Maybe I'm looking in the wrong spots, but I did a Google search and YouTube search and nothing really talking about it. Um, in fact, the only things I found was, I found a couple of forums asking why they have a steel sword. Why, why carry a steel sword, not why carry a silver sword. Um, so it's actually the opposite side of the argument, but I want to talk about the practicality of the silver sword. So, to start off with, let's talk about the material, silver. Silver is very soft. Exactly how soft, I'm not sure. Um, I would assume it's somewhere close to bronze, maybe even softer, not exactly sure. However, bronze was used as a sword material. Now you could always argue that, well, the silver's fine because it's magically enhanced, or in this universe, the silver is like steel. But uh, there are two problems with that. The wiki page states that the silver sword is formed over a steel core. So that acknowledges that, hey, this is too soft, we need to do something about it. Also, if it was just as good as steel, why carry a steel sword? So they, they are acknowledging that silver is a pretty inadequate material. So considering that silver just wouldn't really work, what other alternatives would there be to using a silver sword? To, before we can really decide that, we have to take a look at how does the silver work. We know that sil in the games, silver does more damage to uh, monsters like drowners, forktails, fiends, uh, and the like. So how does it work? Does it interrupt the magic that is affecting these creatures, making them mortal and able to be killed? Um, I don't think so, because um, most of your creatures are uh, products of a curse, like drowners, strigas, uh, noon wraiths, moon wraiths, all of those are products of a curse. So if the silver interrupted the magic, then theoretically putting a so silver sword to them would interrupt the curse and they would become human again, even if only temporarily to move the sword away, and that doesn't happen. So no, I don't think it interrupts magic. Um, yes, there is the thing called the dimeridium bomb, and it actually states that uh, it releases a cloud of silver dust that interrupts magic. So, well here silver interrupts magic, but if it interrupted magic, why wouldn't it temporarily at least cure the curse? Um, Potentially it's a stronger form of magic, or it's a different effect of magic. I'm, I mean, but I think it's giving a, a bit of a benefit of the doubt there. I, I think it's just an inconsistency in the writing. I don't think they thought, hey, you know what, if this does this, then that means this should do this. I just don't think it was thought of. Um, which, which happens, it's, I'm just not saying that, you know, it's, he's, the author's a terrible writer or anything. Um, it's just an inconsistency. I'm not even sure if Dimeridium's in the books. I've only ever read the first one, The Last Wish. Back to how the silver affects monsters. Um, the games and the books establish that um, monsters are in fact allergic to silver, so it's an allergic reaction, which presents another problem with the effectiveness of a sword. If if the creature is allergic to silver, then a quick swipe isn't going to do anything, making the fact that you have a, you know you're making a sacrifice of having inadequate material for the benefits of the, of the allergic reaction null and void because. If you lop off a drowner's hand, he's not going to suddenly, like, oh, I've gotten this large reaction or anything. No, it's um, simply just not in contact with the creature long enough. So you'd really need to drive your sword into the creature and then leave it before it would have any effect. And at that point, you might as well use like an arrow or something that's intended to stay in the creature. And it does say that they are, monsters are extremely allergic to silver and deathly allergic to silver. However, there are people, you know, humans that are extremely and deathly allergic to other items and even then it takes time. I mean, you can't 
throw peanuts at somebody who's allergic to peanuts and expect them to have an allergic reaction. It, just, it doesn't work like that. Um, even bee stings, which can be very fast and fatal, take up to 48 hours to um, completely peak. So expecting to have an instantaneous reaction just off based off a, you know, a, a quarter of a second, and that's being generous, but a quarter of a second contact is just it's pushing the, uh, the realism a bit. Um, I'm willing to accept that you know it only takes a few seconds of um, contact, but you know, like I said, the generous quarter second that would be in the slash is just pushing it, in my opinion. So what alternatives could you have? Well, you would want something that keeps the silver in contact with the creature longer. Um, and if any of you guys know anything about swords, you have to keep them oiled or waxed to keep them from rusting. So my th thinking is just put flakes of silver in that oil or wax so that you know you already have to oil it so it's not any extra work. Um, now when you draw your sword and you go to swipe uh, your creature and you make contact, your blade's only contact for, again, you know, a quarter of a second, being generous. Um, but the oil and the silver flakes um, in it are going to stay in the wound. You're not looking for the silver to kill the creature, and I don't think that's ever been the intent of the silver sword. It was just an added advantage. You're gonna use a sword to kill them, but the silver weakens them and gives the witcher the advantage. So that's what you're gonna get from this. Um, but now that quarter of a second contact extends out to the duration of the fight, so silver flakes are gonna stay in the wound, potentially getting the bloodstream and spread to other parts. So they're gonna to start to get this allergic reaction, which the book describes as burning. And I'll actually read that section here in a second. Uh, this is from the book, and I'll, I'll put it up here so you guys can read along with me. This is from The Last Wish. The moment the trigger tensed and left, the chain whistled through the air and coiling like a snake twined itself around the monster's shoulders, neck, and head. The trigger's jump became a tumble and she let out an ear-piercing whistle. She thrashed around on the floor, howling horribly with fury, or from the burning pain inflicted by the despised metal. So that it's saying that this allergic reaction, at least with the Striga, and I assume it applied for most of the monsters, manifests itself in a burning sensation. So what that would do is cause, uh, assuming it would cause immense pain, and maybe even some other motor function uh, effects. So it could be very beneficial to a witcher if he could you know, fight something uh, like a griffin and slash one of its forearms or one of its wings and that burning sensation and that um, uh, pain associated with that would give the witcher a massive advantage. Um, and if the uh, oil or wax or whatever reason with the silver is completely used up or worn off during the fight and you need more, um, the witcher could have some sort of uh, pouch or like almost like a water skin filled with that oil um, and silver concoction on their hip and they just pop off the top and run down their sword and they're good to go. As far as the expense of it goes, I think it would actually be a lot cheaper too. You know, the amount of silver required to make the sword, even though it has a steel core, the rest of the silver would be quite expensive. Um, the silver flakes would be a lot smaller. And while they would be a consumable, you, you know, your sword theoretically is it's not like a one-time use. Um, but it's gonna, your sword would take repair, especially since it's such a soft material, it would take a lot of repair, and the cost of maintaining and repairing that would be extremely high. Um, so using these silver flakes, I think, would be a lot cheaper. Um, and obviously it's not too expensive to do that, considering the diamond iridium bombs do essentially the same thing. And you don't really need to use it on um, small creatures like drowners either. Um, for that, you just use your standard sword with uh, your steel uh, sword, or in this case, it'd be your own sword, which is another advantage. By getting rid of the silver sword, you only have to carry one sword now, and you have just the silver flakes. But anyway, um, for smaller creatures, you wouldn't really need to use the silver because, again, the silver is just to cause pain and uh, impair the creature that you're fighting so that the witcher has the advantage. With a drowner, you're like, you know, they're humanoid and they're, relatively speaking, fragile compared to, you know, like a griffin or a fiend or something. So, um, a couple of swipes from your sword that might just wound uh, a larger creature is probably going to kill the drowner so the silver wouldn't have much of a time to really have an effect anyway. And the witcher doesn't need some massive advantage over uh, a drowner, but he would need some advantage over a fiend or 
a griffin or a fork tail or something like that. However, um, you really could just use a bow uh, because you'd fire your arrow, have this that silver tipped arrowhead, and that would strike the uh, creature and leave the silver in the body, which would allow you to keep your distance as well. You don't have to get right up on the monster. So the increased healing speed, agility, and reaction speeds that the Witcher have through the mutations would become unnecessary because you would be more of a, a monster assassin than you would a monster hunter. You would just, oh, here's one, fire a couple arrows into it, let it die, or, or at least let the silver detect where it weakens it so much that you can walk up and finish it off. Um, but then again, without the mutations and the, the swords and the close fighting, you sort of lose the uniqueness of the story that the Witcher gives. So I can understand why it's there. Um, anyway, that's my opinion on the silver sword. I think you could do away with it. Use some sort of oil or wax with uh, silver flakes in it. Um, because those would stay in the wound and actually have a, a more of a positive effect for the Witcher. A negative effect for the creature. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching.